Woof. Hey guys, welcome to another video. So, if you didn't already know, I love The Legend of Zelda. And for good reason. It is easily one of the most influential series to grace this earth. And personally, it has helped to shape and mould my love for video games throughout the ages. I remember back when I first got into The Legend of Zelda series with Ocarina of Time for the 3DS. And though I haven't played many games since, I can easily understand how people say that it is the best in the series. But a Zelda game is only as strong as its dungeons, so today I would like to bring you my top 6 favourite Zelda dungeons. Warning, there may be spoilers. So, let's get into my number 6. My 6? Why not my channel? I can do what I want. I have a lot of memories of the ancient cistern, especially of that weird bird thing that will always attack you whenever you went into the main area. I hate that bird. But easily the most memorable moment for me was when you fight the Stalemaster. That part completely frightened me, even though the Stalemaster wasn't even that hard to kill. Keep in mind that I was only about 12 back then. But that isn't the reason that this dungeon made the list. That reason would have to go to the creepiest part of this dungeon, when you travel down into the depths of hell itself. Seriously though, this part actually scared me, especially with those undead bokoblins all over the place. Ew, I like them! I like goblins! And climbing out of that area on a piece of rope while the bokoblins cluster around you and try to pull you off was almost too much to bear. I was a soot. And to top it all off, it was based on an old Buddhist tale. No, seriously, it was based off a tale made in 1938 by author Ryunoso Akutagawa, which was called The Spider's Thread. See, I did my research. The items were good, the dungeon was set out well, the keys were well hidden, and the boss was actually really well made and quite challenging. All things considered, this wasn't such a bad temple, and I would gladly go back and play it again. Boy, do I love me some Ocarina of Time, as you'll soon come to realise. But it was very hard for me to choose between the Forest Temple and the Spirit Temple. However, even though the Forest Temple was an amazing dungeon in itself, and would probably get on my top 10 list, I just had to pick the Spirit Temple. I don't know if it was the music, or the architecture, or the enemies, but somehow they all blended together so well that it made this temple a very enjoyable experience. I love the Mirror Shield which by far is the best design out of any of the other shields in this game in my opinion, and the Koyume and Kotake boss fight was very enjoyable. This dungeon also housed one of my favourite enemies from Ocarina of Time, the Iron Knuckle. I love fighting this behemoth, and each time I did, it never got old doing so. Really, I can't put into words why I enjoyed this dungeon so much, but it was just so enjoyable. Except on Master Difficulty, this dungeon is so hard on Master Difficulty. I only began playing through Twilight Princess a couple of weeks ago, and though I haven't yet finished the game, already I have found another dungeon that I really enjoyed. Arbiter's Grounds. I must have a thing for sand themed temples, as this dungeon, the Spirit Temple and the Sand Ship from Skyward Sword are all some of my favourite dungeons. But I chose Arbiter's Grounds above the rest because it was also quite creepy. The enemies were quite unique to this temple, with the mini Stalfos and the weird black beetle things. And what about the sandworm? <laughs> As I was saying, this temple was really fun to traverse, and I enjoyed hunting for the post sent for half of the dungeon. And of course, I couldn't forget the item that everyone loves. The spinner. Seriously, this thing is awesome! Gliding up walls was amazing, and that boss fight at the end with the Stalord was incredible. On its own, the spinner is awesome, but using it to fight a massive hulking behemoth was just pure genius. There is a reason why this dungeon is featured in my channel art. I'll let you guess why. Now we are getting into some spooky territory. Seriously though, the bottom of the well is easily one of the most terrifying things to grace a Zelda game, whilst also being very fun to explore. 
with hidden rooms, deadly monsters, an awesome boss and a great dungeon design. This area ranks very high on my list. I remember playing this dungeon the first time and being completely freaked out. Not only because of this dungeon itself, but because of what I knew would come next. And really, that is all I have to say about this dungeon. It isn't something that I can really describe in words, but it is an experience, and one that I won't soon forget. I was honestly pretty disappointed with Majora's Mask. I found the dungeons a bit boring, the game overall too stressful, and those fairies that you had to collect were so annoying. Which is kind of a reason why this dungeon ranks so high on this list. Stone Tower Temple was so incredibly unique, with challenging puzzles, great music that is in my opinion some of the best in the Zelda franchise, and a great use of all the different transformation masks and their abilities. I also really enjoyed how you could turn the dungeon upside down, and I thought that was really clever how the music changed to match its orientation. And that boss fight at the end was so awesome. Something about turning into a giant and dwarfing a massive boss that used to tower over me really was something that I haven't seen before in a Zelda game, and it was such fun, especially when I got to grab it by the tail and swing it around like a whip. All in all, this dungeon was very well made, with great music, a great final boss, and well thought out and unique ideas. Easily one of the best things in Majora's Mask. You saw this coming, or you should have if you listened to the number 3 entry on this list, the Shadow Temple. Every time I hear its music, I can remember the same horror that I experienced back in 2012. I remember that when I was younger and was playing the Fire Temple, I would always tell myself that I have two more temples to go before the Shadow Temple, and it always filled me with such dread. I hated this temple, and not because I disliked it, but because it scared me so much. The temple's atmosphere made me feel so anxious that sometimes it felt hard to go on. But I did and I was rewarded with a temple that contained some of the best backstory of any Zelda dungeon. And did it have a backstory? That iconic sentence is burned into the back of my mind. Here is gathered Hyrule's bloody history of greed and hatred. Aside from my nostalgia and personal bias for this dungeon, it also has a great design that forces you to backtrack and think about where you are going. Fighting Dead Hand was great, and Bongo Bongo was such an awesome boss. And all of these reasons add together to create a dungeon that has both stuck with me and continued to horrify me well into my teens. And that is why this is my favourite Zelda dungeon of all time. The Legend of Zelda is such an amazing series, and I know that there are so many experiences that I yet haven't had with the series, or can't remember. If I was to expand this list, or to redo in the future, then games like the Minish Cap, and Wind Waker would probably have their dungeons in that video too. And it is such a testament to this game series that not only can we sit down and discuss what our favourite dungeons were, but we can also share our experiences with them to each other. Thank you so much for watching this video. This is a new format I'm trying out on my channel and I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to share your experiences with these dungeons or other dungeons in the comments below and if you would like to help out my channel, leave a like or if you really want to help out my channel, buy a pair of Noscope gaming glasses. Anyway, I'll see you all in my next video and I really hope that you enjoyed this one. Have a good one.